Hello and welcome to my first presentation for newcomers. Today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk moths. So the first question I suppose we need to ask is what are moths? Well, they sit in an order together with butterflies and that order is called Lepidoptera. It's from the ancient Greek and it actually means scaly wing. The wings of both the moth and the butterfly have got overlapping scales, something like the uh, tiles on a roof and that's where they get their name from. What confuses a lot of people is what the difference is between a butterfly and a moth. Uh, a lot of people think well it's just that butterflies come out in the day and moths come out at night. Uh, others say that it's how they hold their wings or that their bodies are sort of slightly fatter on the moths and a bit hairier. It's actually um, it's not clear cut. It's something that scientists have debated for a long time but one surefire way is to look at the antenna and if you look at the antenna of a butterfly you'll see that it's actually got a club type antenna and it looks a little bit like a sort of half an earbud and then if you look at the antenna of moths they've either got sort of a wire-like antenna which would be a female or they've got a feathered antenna and the feathered antenna is in the male and that's actually what it uses to scent the female. It actually picks up pheromones on the wind using those antenna and that's how it finds a female. So having said that, uh, there always will be some moths that sort of decide not to go with the flow and just be a, a, a night animal. Uh, there are day flying moths and there's a couple of them here. There's the five spot burnets so the burnet family and the moth that sort of everybody wants to see in the UK at the moment because it's a, it's a recent arrival which is the hummingbird hawk moth which is a, a really spectacular moth to see on the wing and if you look at the antenna of the the burnet it's not quite club shaped um, but it's not far off so it's, it's actually a butterfly sort of in the making almost it, you know it is a moth it's a day flying moth but it thinks it's a butterfly Moths and butterflies are obviously both insects and being insects they uh, go through sort of metamorphosis which most insects do and theirs is a complete metamorphosis life cycle which means that they go from an egg into a larva which we commonly call the caterpillar and then into a pupa and then into the adult moth. What surprises people in the UK and I suppose around the world is the sheer sort of quantity of moths. So for instance in the UK there has been recorded 59 species of butterfly whereas with moths there's actually 2,500 species in the UK alone. So if you look at those numbers what that actually means is that for every one butterfly that's been recorded in the UK there's actually 43 different types of, of moth species in the country. And those moths are actually split up into two different groups. So what you've got is you've got the micro moths and then you've got the macro moths, which basically means that you've got very small, which is the micro and large, which is the macro. So for instance, you've got um, one of the pygmies, which is the smallest, not only in the country, but one of the smallest moths in the world. And that would actually fit on this, three millimeter square that I've drawn here it's its wingspans around about three millimeters then at the other end of the scale in this country we've got the convolvulus hawk moth which is it's a migrant to the country but it does tend to appear every year and that's actually got a 120 millimeter wingspan but as big as the convolvulus hawk moth looks um, certainly when you sort of have it on your hand uh, it, it really is quite small compared to the, the largest moth in the world which has the name Hercules moth which suits it rather well and that actually is it's got a wingspan of around about 300 millimeters so if you get your ruler out which is a 30 centimeter ruler which is 300 millimeters what you're actually looking at is the wingspan of this particular moth it's it's a giant and to try and give you an idea of just how big that is I've actually sort of have enlarged the picture on the slide so that you can have a look and it really is around about that size it, it is a fantastic moth 
And I've, I've been asked in the past by people, you know, you know, I'm off something to be scared of. I think a, a lot of people are sort of a little bit put off by sort of how furry they are or that they flutter around at night. Um, but take it from me that there's only there's one sort of group of moths that do have chewing mouth parts and they're a tiny moth and they basically just eat pollen. So there's no chance you're going to get bitten by a moth. Moths are totally harmless to humans. And talking about their feeding habits, and you've got here, as I say, the, the one that's got the chewing mouth parts. The, there's only about five of them in a sort of a group in this country, uh, in the UK. And the others really, you've got those with, that have got a proboscis. Now, proboscis is like a long tube type tongue that they use to push into a flower and suck nectar out. And some of them actually, as adult moths, have got no mouth parts at all. So they haven't got a mouth. And what they do is they feed up enough while they're a caterpillar. So in the larval stage, that will actually basically allow them to live through that adult phase. And in the adult phase, all they really want to do is sort of mate so they don't really have a lot of time for feeding so they just don't have any mouth parts at all and then the word on everyone's lips of course is um you know do moths eat my clothes well no they don't in theory so adult moths don't eat your clothes there's there's no adult moths that would actually eat your clothes their caterpillars do and there are a few caterpillars in the UK and around the world that will um, eat things like uh, carpets and in particular wool they prefer sort of natural fibres rather than your man-made fibres so the, if, it, if it's something like wool they'll eat that. Um, the, the case bearing clothes moth is actually quite a common uh, species in this country although sort of not doing overly well um, but really, you know, there's, there's only around about 1% of moths in the UK that uh, will actually eat clothes. So there's nothing to worry about there. So now we've dealt with one myth, um, moths don't eat your clothes. Uh, the other thing I often hear is, yeah, but all moths are just little brown jobs. They're just little brown things. And I can tell you that they're not. Uh, there is a huge number of moths, as you know, in this country. Uh, there is actually 160,000 species in the world, uh, as opposed to sort of 17,500 butterflies. Yet butterflies are always the ones that people say, oh yeah, they're the colorful ones, moths are just brown things. But just to show you that's not the case, I've put together just a few of my favorites. So the uh, the green silver lines, when I first saw that, it, it took my breath away. It's an amazing moth, um, as is the, the barred yellow. I think on that slide, though, that the green silver line probably wins out. And on this slide, we've got another one of my, of my real favourites. This, this is the burnished brass. And you, you, you're never going to get an idea from a slide just how fantastic these moths are. Uh, you, you get them in the hand and they really do glimmer like brass. They, they're a fantastic little moth. And the leopard moth, which is, again, stunning in its own right with its, its black and white patterning. It's a reasonably large moth and, and quite impressive if you catch one in the trap. But I want to finish with a couple, one of which is very butterfly-like. If you look at it, that's the small emerald. Um, you know, it holds its wings quite flat. Uh, it sometimes does hold the wings above its body. Very butterfly-type shape. But the other one is a hornet moth. And the hornet moth is a moth, that it is a moth, um, called the hornet moth for obvious reasons. If you have a look, it looks like a hornet. Uh, it's actually a mimic, and there's a lot of mimics in the insect world, and this one's an absolutely spot on mimic. I mean, if you look at that, and if you saw that on a tree, you would genuinely think that's a hornet. So I think, you know, we, we can say, you know, moths are definitely not just little brown jobs.